bless you today. Listen, thank you so much for joining our worship experience. Listen, it is a year of elevated expectation. God has been doing phenomenal things all year long. We're excited about this worship experience on today. Listen, we want to pause for the calls even now and invite you to become a virtual evangelist. We want you to hit that love button, hit that share button if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, you got about two seconds to copy this link and send it to Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. It is a year of elevated expectations. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you clap your hand all over the house and give God praise? Come on, clap him like you got the victory. Come on, clap him like you're victorious. Come on, clap him like surely he died. He came and he died and he rose with all power. Are you excited about that? Isn't that good news? Isn't that why you're here today? Come on, without wrath or doubt and without reservation, can we stand all over the house and give God praise? Come on, let's take control of the atmosphere. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. Truly, there's nobody like you on all the earth. We search high and truly you are our helper. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. Father, you are here today. Father, we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise for it now. Even as we're staying here today, and Father, as we in your house, go to our house now. Meet us at our point of need, Father. Heart to heart, breath to breath. Father, thank you for that you care about us. And Father, we give you glory, we give you praise for it. Now, Father, let your word fall into our hearts and to our ears, Father. Father, for life application, we give you glory and we give you honor. And we'll forever give you praise. In Jesus Christ, name we do praise. Come on, let's give our praise right there. Oh. Simple, right here. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All oh, will see how great, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God? Come on, sing it with us. Sing with me. All will see how great. Come on, do it beyond your back, say it again.
God. If you agree, God, this evening, lift your hands in the house. Lift your hands in the house. Lift your hands in the house. Come on, with the fruit of your lips. Oh. How great is your great God this evening? How great, how great, come on, think about it. How great, how great is our God. He's a great God. He's a great God. You want to say something to him Why he's here. The helper is here. The healer is here. And the more you call on him, the more you pray, the more he'll come and massage your heart. He's here. Oh. I know this must be the song for the season. And there the lifting of the hands. And there the lifting of the heart. There the lifting of the eyes Beyond the hills Where my help come from Anybody need help? And there the lifting of the hands Come on, you should know about now And there the lifting of the heart Because he came And there the lifting of the eyes Where my help come from? Oh, and there's the lifting, yeah. And there's the lifting of the heart. Because he came to earth, and there's the lifting of the eyes. Beyond the together and we will lift up our hands we there we go come on lift the voice and we will lift up our heart and we will lift up our hearts
helper is here. Yes. Come on, the helper is here. Yes. Receive the help. We will lie. Where my help come from? Yes. Come on, on a good Friday. We will lie. Where my help, where my help come yes. from? It's a good Friday. We Hallelujah, where my help come from, we realize, yeah, yeah, where my help come from, you want to say, come on. Know where your help come from. Come on, if you know where your help come from. Come on, I say bless the name of the Lord if you know where your help come from. If you realize where your help comes from. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We honor God on this day, on this Good Friday. Somebody shout Good Friday. Good Friday. Come on, shout one more time. Say it's Good Friday. Good Friday. And somebody say, how was it good if he died? Yes. Well, he laid down on Friday. But early Sunday, he was getting up. So it's a good Friday. Tell your neighbor, it's a good Friday. It's a good Friday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We honor God. We honor God on today. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. We're preparing to move forth in our services. I'm so excited I'm about tonight. Our very anointed ministers of the gospel are going to go forth on tonight. Before they even come, come on, let's give them a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give them a hand clap of anticipation, a hand clap of encouragement before they even come. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Well, we welcome you to our seven last sayings of Christ from the cross. Uh, it is, in fact, a good Friday because on this Friday, he laid it down. Hallelujah. But even in his laying down, he let him know. He says, nobody take my life. Help me, God. He says, but if I lay it down, he says, I lay it down on my own accord. But he says, just like I lay it down, I'm able to pick it back up again. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, he got up again. Come on. Come on, tell the neighbor, says, neighbor, he got up again. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We got a lot of church to go tonight. We got a lot of church tonight. Do me a favor. Look at a neighbor and says, neighbor, buckle up. Oh, that was the wrong neighbor. Says, neighbor, buckle up. Help me, God. We got a long, we got a lot of church tonight. Hallelujah. 
Good God, yes, I feel God today. Jesus, it's a good Friday service, but I believe somebody can get deliverance on a good Friday. I believe somebody can get a breakthrough on a good Friday. If you got that kind of faith, go ahead for the next 20 seconds and praise God on a good Friday. Yes. Thank you. Oh my. Thank you. Yes, God, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Do me a favor. Come on, just tell a neighbor. It says, neighbor, he got up. Come on, that was the wrong neighbor. Tell another neighbor. It says, neighbor, he got up. And because he got up, I can get up from anything. Come on, give God praise one more time. We got to go. Give God a getting up praise. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to leave it alone because it's going to be that kind of night. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Well, this is your official welcome to our Good Friday service. Hallelujah. It's a Good Friday because he laid it down. But he laid it down with preparation of getting back up again. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Come on and put those blessed hands together as we transition now to our seven last saints of Christ from the cross. He's been betrayed by Judas. And after being betrayed, the soldiers take him and arrest him and carry him from judgment hall to judgment hall where they abused him and they beat him and they put a crown of thorns on his head and, and they ridiculed him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus... Hallelujah, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. They don't know. Uh, they think that they are taking my life. They think that they are doing something uh, that they plan to do, but they are actually playing an uh, intricate part in the plan of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So they have beaten Jesus, and they've forged him, and They've mistreated him, and now they take him before Pilate. And, and Pilate, after hearing everything, and Pilate said, well, I find no fault in him. And so Pilate is ready to give him back to the people. And he asked them, you know, who do you want? Because they had a man called Barabbas who was a known criminal. And he was arrested, and instead of 
them choosing Jesus, they chose Barabbas. And these are the same people that earlier had said, Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, when Jesus made the triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they were waving the palm leaves, and they were honoring Jesus. These are the same people who now are saying, give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus, crucify him. And so they take Jesus and they lay a heavy cross on his shoulders and, and they demand that he carry this cross that he's going to be crucified on up Golgotha Hill and up the Via Della Rosa and he does it to the best of his ability, which his abilities were great even though he was suffering. And he took that cross up to Golgotha Hill. And when he got to the hilltop, you would think that was bad enough, but then they took the cross and lay it down and lay him out on the cross, stretched him out, and they nailed his hands and feet to that cross. And after doing that, they had dug a hole to put the cross down in, so they lifted that cross up with Jesus on it and dropped it down into that hole and did not know that they were fulfilling scripture that Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So they were fulfilling scripture and they did not know it. And Jesus knew that they did not know it. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you know here, the people had a choice. They had a choice. They could have chosen Jesus, but they, they chose Barabbas. And Jesus had a choice. Jesus had a choice. He could have said no. He could have refused. But he, his choice was the cross because of you and because of me and because of the world that God loves so much. Jesus chose the cross. Amen. His choice was for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, when he got lifted up, and he was lifted up in the heights of the cross, in the, the top part, the heights was where he was looking down from. He looked down at the people, and he fastened his eyes on these soldiers because they had his raiment, his clothing, and they were hiding his raiment, and they were casting lots, and they were gambling, and they were drinking cheap wine, having a party, you might say, while Jesus is hanging on the cross suffering. And Jesus looks down on them with an eye of pity and a heart of compassion, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. Here they are attempting to take his life, and Jesus did not allow bitterness to come into his heart, but only compassion filled his heart. While they were trying to do him harm, he was interceding for them on their behalf. He was not praying about them to God. Many times when we go through different betrayals or whatever, and we'll say, well, I just, you know, I can't forget this. God, to help me to forgive it. Uh, I'll tell God something about what happened. He already know. But Jesus did not consider himself. He prayed. He interceded for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't have a time of somebody help me when, when I get too far. Jesus looks down, <laughs> hallelujah, from the, the cross, and, and he sees them, and his heart is just filled with love, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Matthew 20 and 28 and Mark 10, 45 says, Even so the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but minister and to give his life a ransom for many. They did not take his life. He gave it. He surrendered to the will of the Father, of God. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus had already forgiven them. 
before he asked his father to forgive them. Here Jesus teaches us to forgive first and then pray. Hallelujah for your enemies. They are trying to kill him as he is praying for them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why didn't they know? That was the question that came to me. Why didn't they know? They had to have heard about all of the miracles that Jesus had done. Probably knew some of the people that Jesus had healed. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years and to just touch the hem of his garment, not even touch him, and have the blood dried up. They had to have heard about that. Or they had to have heard about Jairus' daughter uh, being healed. They had to have heard about Lazarus when Jesus called him forth out of the tombs and he had been dead for four days. They had to have heard about that. And those nine bibles, they had to have heard about the wedding at Cana when they had water turned to wine by Jesus. I know they heard about that. Hallelujah. Because they love to drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How could they not know? Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, they walk in the vanity of their own mind. What they know, their intellect, their understanding. That was why they, didn't, they were blind because of their, their hearts were blinded. And that, that, that occurs even now today. We have people who see the hand of God moving, see God using people, see God using specific people, yet and still they refuse to accept or believe it. They rather believe something else because it's not their choice. Hallelujah. Because it's not their choice, but it's God's choice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. But you know, they never would have touched Jesus if they had known that he is the light of the world. They never would have touched him if they understood that he is the peace that surpasses all understanding. They never would have touched him if they understood he was he is the bread of life. They never would have put their hands on him to do him harm if they knew that he is the hope when there is no hope. That he is our only help when there is no help. If they had known that Jesus is the rock of our salvation, that that rock is higher than you and I, and it is a shelter for us, they didn't know that this rock would be the shelter for you and for me. Hallelujah. Over 2,000 years after the cross. Hallelujah. Now that same rock has become the living stone. Hallelujah. That stone rolled down. Through two, over 2,000 generations, yes. crashing out sin and demolishing sickness and disease. Yes. That yes. stone, yes. hallelujah, yes. that stone, yes. that living stone is Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's restored life. Yes. He's healed bodies. Yes. And he continues to this day, hallelujah, yes. doing the work of the, of the Father through those who he chose here yes. on this earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If they had known, hallelujah, hallelujah, if they had known, but their hearts were filled with vanity. And so they lifted Jesus up from the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's John 12 and 32. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. On the height of the cross, Jesus is now in position to draw all men unto himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be quiet. 
you know we both deserve this. And you know this man is innocent. Have you no fear of God? Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. I tell you the truth. You will be with me today. In paradise. And amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Say amen again. Can you give the Lord a shout in this house? Come on. You're kind of quiet. Come on. Come on. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a shout. If I had, if I had half a voice, I'd say, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Can you help me see that? One day when I was lost, he died up on the cross. Blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon that cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, amen, and to the angel of this house, Ronnie Martin Thomas, Jr. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for him, amen. And to everyone else in ministry in their perspective places, amen. My assignment today is Luke 23, Luke 23 and the 43rd verse, amen. Luke 23 and the 43rd verse, and it reads as thus, and Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Sure, assuredly, I say to you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And my assignment uh, word is salvation. Tell your neighbor, say salvation. Thank God for saving me. Amen. A sinner saved by grace. Amen. And if I could tag this sermonette on today, it would be the personification of salvation. The personification of salvation. We all know the story of the crucifixion of Jesus the Christ. We've heard it since we were children on how he came through 40 and 2 generations. Amen. Born of a virgin through immaculate conception of the Holy Ghost. How he healed, set free, and delivered blinded eyes. Blinded eyes were open, lame were able to walk, dead rose again, healed a woman with an issue of blood, healed Jairus' daughter, cleansed the lepers, taught the disciples how they should pray, calmed a raging sea, gave us the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount, fed 5,000 and 4,000 with a few fish and a few loaves of bread, and he hung, bled, and died for our sins. Amen. Isaiah said it like this, 53 and 3, 3 through 5, he said, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. Amen. And afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised uh, for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes uh, we are healed. Amen. My task on today as the second up in the seven last sayings of Jesus the Christ, how he carried the cross upon Galatians' heel to a place called Calvary, how he was beat with a cat of nine tails, which consisted of metal and stone. His flesh, how he, in his flesh, how he, he was crowned with a crown of thorns placed upon his head. How they spat on him, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Can I set the stage? P. 
pierced him in his side, how they nailed him in his wrist, and how they nailed him in his feet is salvation. Helping set the stage for the next five pronosticators of the gospel, my fellow laborers in the ministry. Luke 23, 43 says, and Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. But we must first go back to the preceding scriptures leading up to the conversation between Jesus, the Christ, and these two malefactors are in some versions of the Bible, thieves. In Luke 23, 36 through 38, the soldiers told, if you are king of kings, the king of the Jews, save yourself. And the inscription written over him was, this is the king of the Jews. What an understatement of the king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. Luke 23 and 30 says, there were two criminals who were hanged and blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. The first criminal, even in the midst of him dying, found himself making sarcastic marks, making sarcastic remarks. But in verse 40, the other criminal answered and rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? 41 says, he said, We deserve what we're getting, but what we did, we are getting our due reward. Amen. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me. Do, Lord, do, Lord, do remember me. So we used to sing when we were younger, amen. But this blew my mind. This right here blew my mind. What did this criminal know? What had he been told? What had he read on his journey of mass destruction, robbing, stealing, and possibly killing? Could it have been his grandfather, mother, grandmother, mother, father, uncle, aunt, or cousin, brother, sister, and them? Told him about Jesus at some point. Maybe they told him about Romans 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Stop. Wait a minute. Did this criminal say in the midst of dying to Jesus, Lord? He sealed the deal by declaring in the midst of dying, this man made a declaration on the cross to the personification of who is salvation, who is, is Savior, and who is the one able to save and give us salvation. What do I mean? Personification, a noun, person, place, or thing. In this instance, a person in, a person in the person of Jesus the Christ, meaning the attribution of a personal nature of our human characteristics is something non-human, are the representation and abstract quality in a human form, Pastor. What am I saying? I'm so glad you are so inquisitive to know. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit wrapped up in an earth suit equaling salvation. Can I put a stamp on it? Like this. Can I put a praise on it like Tasha Cobb would say? God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Another songwriter put it like this. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the sky, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name on high. Had this criminal heard or uh, uh, read John 12 and 32 where Jesus predicts his death on the cross and says, as uh, Minister Gamble so eloquently said, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all. A-L-L men unto me. But here in Luke 23 and 42, this criminal says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This thief recognized that Jesus would live and rule. He wanted to be saved and take part in Christ's kingdom. Amen? So what am I saying if we are asked, or if we ask Jesus the Christ to save us, no matter what the situation, no matter what we've done, or no matter what we've been through in this life, he will save us. And as I hasten to a close, Jesus' response to the thief in verse 43 was, you will be with me. Jesus promised eternal life to the thief, doing what the mockers asked him to do in verse 39. And 
end as I come to a close. Don't pay your haters any attention. The doubters, because Jesus hung, well, he bled and he died. I said he hung, bled, and he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hung, bled, and he died so that we can be saved and set free and set free and live in victory. Yeah, Jesus is the personification of salvation. There is salvation in no one else. Acts 4 and 12 tells us, for there is no other name under heaven and given it on earth among men by which we can be saved. And that name is Jesus. Can you say that with me? That name is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. Yeah. 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 There's power in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say, in the name of Jesus. Tell them, practice say it in the name of Jesus. Tell them, practice say it in the name of Jesus. Yeah! There was slain who laid in a Bible tomb for three long days and rose to restore us to himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm done, y'all. Bye-bye. I bid you adieu. But don't forget on this Good Friday that he died for me and you. We've got our own crosses to bear. He says to take up your cross and follow me. Daily, yeah. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Isn't he worthy on tonight? Amen. Amen. So I am charged on tonight with um, woman, behold your son. We'll read from John 19 and 26 verse through the 27th verse. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word on today. I want to give honor to our pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor Ronnie M. Thomas, Jr. Praise God for you. Amen. I want to give God honor to the ministers in the house and to all and to my husband, amen, and the minister of music here, Anthony Lowe. But to God be the glory, amen. My subject matter is relationship, amen. Let's look at the definition of relationship. The way in which two 
or more concepts, objects, or people are connected, or the state of being connected, the state of being connected by blood or marriage, the way in which two or more people or groups regard and behave toward each other. Amen. So we, we know what a relationship is, right? It's a connection. That's the main word there, a connection. And I want to talk about a few relationships that Christ had, amen? And the first one would be the connection of a mother and a son. A mother loves her children so much that she will give all that she has for their well-being. She will give her time. She will give her money. She will give all of her energy and all of her substance, amen, if, for her children that she loves. Now, I'm talking about a real mother, amen? And so she, Mary, was a real mother who loved her son. Our Savior's mother, love, love was no different, amen, and than our love as mothers. I am a mother, so I understand the love of a mother, amen? Can you imagine the anguish she had to feel to see her son go through the atrocities of, that are called crucifixion? Hallelujah, the mocking, the beating, the disrespect, the anguish, and the pain. Hallelujah. Picture this as just put yourself in her shoes. Hallelujah. Picture this, that you are watching your son, who is a promised child from God. Amen. How many of you know about a promise that gift that God gave you that you were not expecting and that you didn't deserve, but God gave her this promised child, amen? And so you, you've seen him grow from a baby. You've taught him, hallelujah, you've had to chastise him at times. You've been a mother. You made him, made plans for his future. You had every plan that he would be successful, grow and be all kind of wonderful things, Amen. And you've been blessed to see him grow into the man that he is, and now you are proud of him. Used, used, uh, used by Abba Father, God, to heal, he's used to set free, and he's used to deliver multitudes. Amen? I want to go back a little bit from when he was a child, Luke 2, 48 through 51. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother, let me first give you a little reference, excuse me. This is when he was 12 years old. Amen? This is when he's a child. Can you imagine? This is your child. You've, been, you've trained him up up to this point, but he's still your child. And so this is what's going on. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Keep in mind, he disappeared. Okay? They didn't know where he was. Hallelujah. Why have you treated us like this? This, your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you, why were you searching for me? He says, don't you know, I had, I had to do, I had to be about my father's business. I had to be about my father's house in this translation, but they did not understand what he was saying. Hallelujah. They didn't understand what his calling was. She didn't fully understand who she had in her possession, the gift that she had in her possession. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and man. Amen. So this is a little backdrop, huh? So we see that even as a child, he knew who he was. He at least had an idea of who he was. We don't know all the ins and outs of how that worked, but we knew he understood that he had to be about his father's business, even though his parents didn't fully understand. And so this is a relationship with, um, from a mother to a son. She doesn't see him as the Savior. She doesn't see him as the one that's supposed to save the world. She sees him as, this is my son. This is the one that I've raised. This is the one that I love. That is her relationship with him. Hallelujah, that he is a gift from God, and God said he's going to do something great through this child, but I don't fully understand what that is. So she doesn't understand it when he says, I have to be about my father's business. 
Amen. And then we can look at Christ's relationship with, hallelujah, his brother, a friend you can count on. John is a devoted disciple and a student under Jesus' discipleship. He is a brother to Jesus. They have walked the distance together. He has seen John's heart. He knows, uh, he knows because of the relationship that he has with John what kind of man he is. He knows he can be, that he is dependable and he can depend on him. He knows he can provide for his mother. Hallelujah. So it's something to be able to have that kind of relationship where you can depend on somebody to take your place and take care of your mother. Amen? And then we have to look at the relationship that this all was done for. We know that Jesus suffered, bled, and died. We know the price he paid on Calvary, but what was it for? Christ and his church. Every miracle, every teaching, all the efforts, all the time was meant to create a bridge to unite to the ultimate relationship, to unite God's children back to himself. Hallelujah. The relationship between Christ and the church. Christ's desire is that none would be lost. That was the whole purpose of him going through all that he went through is that none would be lost, that everyone would have an opportunity to know him, to know peace, to know love, amen, to know freedom, to know that you don't have to be sick, you don't have to be impoverished, you don't have to lack anything because I am all that you need, amen. And so Jesus Christ had a relationship with his mother. Jesus had a relationship with his brother John so close that he could depend on him to take care of his mother, and Jesus desired a relationship with us. But do you know about the relationship that God wants to have with you? Amen. He said that he, the word tells us that he loved, it, he loved us so much that he, would give, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. And the word of God tells us, greater love have no man than this, than that a man would lay down his life for his friend. So isn't that something that God would call us friend? So on today, I want to encourage you to know that God wants a relationship with you. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter how far you strayed to the right or to the left. God wants a relationship with you. This was the ultimate sacrifice that he would lay down his life for, for humanity to bring us back to a place, hallelujah, where we can be in communion with God, hallelujah. So on today, I just want to encourage you to seek him deeper and to know that that relationship is there for you. Amen. Give God glory. Greetings and welcome to Bethlehem Baptist Church. Today's announcements are as follows. Have you downloaded the Givelify app? This app allows you to sow no matter where you are and no matter what time of day. As we know, when we sow into fertile ground, we can expect a harvest. This app will make giving easier. Remember, with Givelify, you can give any amount, anytime, and anywhere. So download Givelify, add Bethlehem as your church, and sow today. BBC. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for our virtual Bible study with Pastor Ronnie Thomas Jr. here on Facebook and YouTube. Good morning, Good morning Bethlehem. Bethlehem. We are so excited about this event that's coming up. The trustee ministry wants to challenge you to come out for the water, water and, and walk. walk. This will be happening on April 16th at 10 a.m right here at Bethlehem Baptist Church in the city of Covington. So come out if you're young or you're seasoned, please come on out and show your support for your church. Amen. Get your water and your walk. Come on. Right now, as we're in the midst of the big loser, this is a great opportunity. Amen. So come on out. On behalf of the trustee ministry, we hope to see you there. Bethlehem, fish for five. Invite five people to church every Sunday. Who is your five?
BBCC, join us for our leadership workshop, members only. Instructed by Pastor Arthur Jackson III of Miami Gardens and the Baptist Church. This will take place April 21st at 7 p.m. Host by very own Pastor Reverend Ronnie M. Thomas Jr. See you there. This concludes today's announcements. For more information, please visit our website at www.BethlehemBaptistCovingtonGA.com. Also, like and follow us on Facebook at Bethlehem Baptist Church Covington GA. That's Bethlehem Baptist Church Covington GA.